All right. Uh, happy Sunday, everybody. Um, the kids have uh, prepared uh, a presentation for us on uh, some of the readings from Isaiah. So we have two groups of uh, young folks here who are going to do the reading, and then we have some things that are going to emerge from the back. And so I'd encourage you to keep your eyes front and center, keep your ears wide open like the students have through all of this. And uh, I'm going to fill in with a couple of uh, other folks. So just some, some, so you're aware, these are grapes, okay? And then there are grape vines around the front. And um, I think if you keep your eyes open, uh, you'll see some kings, maybe good kings and bad kings emerge as the story proceeds. So I encourage you all to watch. Our first lesson is from Isaiah 5. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes. Yay! <laughs> but it yielded only bad fruit. <laughs> now you dwellers in Jerusalem and people of Judah, Judge between me and my vineyard, what more could have been done for my vineyard that I have not done for it? When I looked for good grapes, Yay! why did it yield only bad? Boo. Now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall. I leave the bad fruit on its own, and it will be trampled. <laughs> the prophet laments that the bad kings did not care for their people, but only for themselves, creating a whole kingdom of sour grapes. <laughs> Continuing on Isaiah 11. Out of the devastated vineyard, the vineyard that produced great King David, a vineyard that now seems to tell a shoot shall come forth. The Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and respect of the Lord. His light shall be in honoring God. He shall not judge by appearances or by rumors, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor in style of fairness for the meek of the earth. Jesus used the imagery from Isaiah to remind us that our choices can make our life sweet like good grapes. Yay! Or sour like bad grapes. Yay. Good grapes. Yay. Love God and love one another. We love God by caring for creation and caring for one another. The prophet rejoices even though the sour grapes Ooh. caused much destruction. A good king is coming, one who cares for God's creation and and God's people. During Advent, we remember that God sent us Jesus and the Spirit of Christ is still at work helping us care for the poor and work for, the, for righteousness. Let us be thankful for God's love, care of creation, care for one another, and the vineyard will yield good grapes for harvest. Yay! Very nice, kids. Um, let's Good. our time Good. together with prayer. Thank you for teaching us about good grapes and sour grapes. And, um, and let us pray like we always do and then um, Carol will lead us in our, in our song. There's always room for one more, right? All right, let's pray. Dear God, Dear God help us, help us. To be good grapes. Be good grapes. Yay! Yay! Oh, Amen. Um, good morning. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. God, one of the great gifts that you have shared with us is your word. Open our hearts and minds as the scriptures are read and the message is proclaimed. Help us to hear with anticipation what you have to say 
and give us a sense of urgency to share it with others. Amen. The first scripture lesson for today is a compilation from throughout the Bible, and we will read responsively. If your brother becomes poor and cannot maintain himself with you, you shall support him as though he were a stranger and a sojourner, and he shall live with you. Take no interest from him or profit, but fear your God, that your brother may live beside you. You shall not lend him your money at interest, nor give him your food for profit. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use it will be measured back to you. And the second reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 15. It can be found on page 183 of your Pew Bible. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God.
Good morning. What now feels like many, many years ago, I was a personal beauty consultant with Mary Kay Cosmetics, which is pretty funny because I wash my face with soap and I wear no makeup. <laughs> but I was on family leave from the church at the time, pregnant with my youngest and looking for something to do. And so I signed up for Mary Kay as a favor to a friend. One of the things that we learned in our sales meetings was how everyone should be looked at as a potential customer. If we loved our product and believed in its potential to improve our customers' skin care and beauty program, then we should want to share that with everyone we meet. The problem was, I was just not that passionate about cosmetics. As a matter of fact, I realized the thing that I was still very passionate about was the good news of God's love for you and for me and for all of creation. And that Jesus pointed to how that love could turn the injustices in this world upside down. My Mary Kay career was brief, but before my youngest turned one, I was back serving a local church in Troy and very happy to be sharing the good news with people in the church and in the community and in fact, anyone and everyone I could. Recently, I moved into a new position where I am currently employed, and I am very excited about that and have been eager to share it with friends. So many of you already know that I am the new Assistant Director of Development at Unity House. Upon hearing the news, I can't tell you how many people responded. So that means you ask people for money, right? A reasonable question, and to be honest, Part of the case I made in my interview for the position was that when I was a clergy person, I asked donors for support every single week. A while back, our own Karen Green, sitting right over here, um, did the website for Hudson Falls United Methodist Church, and while doing that, she archived some of the former pastor Dave LaFergie's sermons. Last week after worship, Karen shared with me and Pastor Karen some words that um, were in a stewardship commitment Sunday sermon that Dave did many years ago that have stuck with her all this time. It was a Sunday morning worship service at the Washington National Cathedral. Just before the collection plates were passed, the very Reverend Nathan D. Baxter, Dean of the Cathedral, stood and announced, smiling broadly, the water of salvation is free, but it costs for the plumbing. <laughs> Indeed, it is difficult to ignore whether a church or a social service organization that it takes money to keep the doors open and the lights on, and especially on a day like today, the heat too. Overhead costs money, and we must raise it if we are to continue the work that we are called to do. But the truth is, that is rarely what inspires extravagant generosity. What, of course, I am glad to be doing working in development at Unity House is inviting people to support the mission, something that I am passionate about, enhancing the quality of life for people living in poverty, adults with mental illness, victims of domestic violence, children with developmental delays in their families, people living with HIV AIDS, and others whose needs can be effectively met by Unity House services and philosophy. Unity House provides direct service and works towards social justice. When I develop relationships with current and potential donors, it is for the purpose of empowering them to join us in making life better for people. I am really blessed to be asking and people seem to feel very blessed by their giving. In the film, Pay It Forward, a seventh grade social studies teacher asks, what if you look around at the world and you don't like what you see? What if the world is a big disappointment? He suggests his students have the power to take the things they don't like about this world and flip them upside down. And then 11 year old Trevor gets an assignment an assignment he becomes passionate about. This 
is your assignment. Extra credit, it goes on all year long. Now, wait a minute. What? What? What's wrong with this? What's the matter? Yes? It's, it's like so... So what? There must be a word to finish that sentence. Someone help her? Weird. Crazy. Weird. Crazy. Hard. Bummer. Bummer. Hard. How about possible? It's possible. The realm of possibility exists where? In each of you. Here. So you can do it. You can surprise us. It's up to you. Trevor. Trevor's plan is a charitable program based on the networking of good deeds. He calls his plan Pay It Forward, which means the recipient of a favor does a favor for three others rather than paying it back. However, it needs to be a major favor that the recipient can't complete for themselves. It could, in fact, be a pretty amazing plan for transforming the world. But the class immediately recognizes that there's a big hitch in this in that it relies on the honor system, you know, that people will give once they have received. Indeed, the generosity scripture speaks to is largely grounded in the same. God says, you see your brother or sister with a need? Take care of them, remembering that when you were a slave in Egypt, I took care of you. Pay it forward. In one of my favorite hymns, there is a line Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I am constrained to be. And I do feel in debt to the grace of God that healed my spirit and made me whole. But it is not a debt I can pay back. I can only pay it forward. Indeed, the greatest gifts we have received, life, freedom, redemption, salvation, we can't pay them back, and both testaments expect that truly recognizing how blessed we are needs to result in our being a blessing to others. In the lesson this morning from 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing the equivalent of a first century stewardship letter, sort of like the ones we received in the mail with the pledge cards that we were asked to bring with us today. As Paul went about his travels spreading the good news of Jesus' way among the Gentiles, he was also collecting offerings for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. For Paul, giving was proof or evidence of our love of God. When we accept the gift of God's love freely given to us, our only possible response is to live and give generously and cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. The Greek word for cheerful is hilaros, which is the root of our English word hilarious. And where the giving we are called to do is not a joke, it should be a joyful effort to pay forward our blessings so that others might know God's love through us. We are invited to make our commitments to Del Mar Presbyterian Church today as a joyful response to what God has done for us by paying it forward to others. And by uniting our gifts as a church, we can do that in a way that expresses extravagant generosity to the community around us and to the world, making God's kingdom of love and peace and justice real on earth as it is in heaven. We are not here to fund a budget, but to support a mission that involves loving God and our neighbors. We do that together through the thousands of dollars distributed to agencies and programs that care for the last and the least and the lost, that feed the hungry and clothe the naked and tend to the sick and in prison. We do that through the radical hospitality shown by opening our doors to Family Promise and to AA. We do that by supporting ministries like the RPMs to connect youth to God's love and to each other through worship and in service to communities where there is need.
We do that by feeding the hungry through projects like squash hunger and distribution of Thanksgiving meals to families who might otherwise go without. We do that together by providing the leadership for welcoming worship, where we inviting others to find a spiritual home here, and by supporting spiritual formation, where we learn together more about who God is calling us to be and how we can be active followers of Jesus' way. We will give to keep the lights on and the doors open, but our gifts will be cheerful and generous, perhaps even extravagant, when we are in touch with how blessed we are and when we believe those gifts will make a real difference in our community and in our world. But here's the thing. We are called to give without expectation of being paid back in any way. We give with hopeful, joyful trust in what happens when those gifts are paid forward. To get started with his Pay It Forward project, the first person Trevor tries to help is a man named Jerry, who is homeless and has a drug addiction. Trevor brings Jerry home. He feeds him, lets him get cleaned up, and sleep in the garage. Trevor apparently gives Jerry his savings, which he uses to buy clothes to wear to an interview for a job that he gets. To pay it forward, Jerry fixes Trevor's mom's broken down truck, but he unfortunately isn't able to stay off drugs or to keep his job, and Trevor counts Jerry as a failed effort, a bad investment, let's say. Except Trevor's mom has already started to pay it forward as well. And Trevor doesn't know that this happens after Jerry leaves town. God, listen to me. Nothing's this important. Come on, come, come, come down here. What are you doing? What are you caring? Because I owe somebody a favor. Not me. Why not you? You know, a minute ago, all I could think about was getting my next fix. And then I saw you and I, and I changed my thinking. Oh, please. Go away. Trust me. I'm not worth it. Why is that? Oh, for God's sake. Come on, tell me. Why are you not worth it? <laughs> you wouldn't understand. Are you kidding me? You think I live at the Ritz? <laughs> Have a cup of coffee with me. Save my life. Jerry's life was changed by receiving the gift. Jerry's life is saved by what he gives. Pastor Karen has been preaching the narrative lectionary and for the past few months. We have been hearing the faith story and the very, very unlikely cast of characters God has used to do the work of love and justice in the world. And yet, here we are. Because faithful and flawed folks have responded to God's unconditional love by paying it forward from the beginning and through to today. God loves a cheerful giver. And that joy 
comes from giving with a recognition of the blessings we have received and in service to a mission that we trust has the power to transform us, our church, our community, and the world. Consider the commitment you are making this morning. Does it make you smile? Does it make you laugh and dance? Because you know the difference that it will make to continue God's saving work for others. Do you know that by extending our hand with what we have in an act of extravagant generosity, our life is saved as well by connecting our heart to the divine giver who gives freely. In any way, is your gift and your giving evidence of good grapes? Yay! <laughs> And now let us sing together our hymn of faith, Spirit, Open My Heart, verses 1 and 2. Um, Laura, you're gonna, you want to introduce our last minute for mission, or last minute for stewardship, which is also about mission. So the last few weeks you have heard stories from a selection of members about what stewardship has meant to them and their own families. But what does that stewardship mean to this church, to Delmar Presbyterian Church? This place is full of hundreds of stories and even more from those we have helped out. It comes down to the fact that stewardship is caring. I was tasked with creating this video and it was amazing how much this church has done, both for our local community, such as the Bethlehem Food Pantry and Family Promise, and to those around the world, such as Presbyterian Disaster Aid or Pazapa, with which the Skulls family and DPC are very closely tied to, and we continue to support those children in Haiti with disabilities. So whether it is an extra quarter in the donation plate each week, or giving of yourself the gift of your time to an event we organize, please consider what you can do to support our building and the mission of this church. Thank you. Very nice.
go in God's name and because you believe and are generous in your expression of it, others will know that God's love and justice live in this world. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God's countenance be lifted upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Amen.